don't really know what comes next i'm just doing my welcome back and uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to a new video on gymnosperms this is the greenhouse of department of botany at st joseph's college in the back part of this uh, greenhouse we have a gymnosperm garden in this gymnosperm garden we have a number of gymnosperms which are very rare and some of them are endangered what you see here is podocarpus i am standing under a gymnosperm called podocarpus it is belonging to the family podocarpaceae it is a conifer this is a small tree sometimes it is also a shrub it grows up to about 100 feet in height it produces a bright red colored fruit the fruits of this gymnosperm are eaten by the birds and they disperse the seeds this is another gymnosperm this is the yule this is a cycad it comes out of the family zamiaceae So Dayun is another endangered gymnosperm that we have in St Joseph's College campus. You can see the stem of Dayun. Dayun has rough and ragged stem. The same kind of stem we see in even in case of cycas. Even cycas also has rough and ragged stem, and that's because of the persistent leaf bases. When the leaves fall down, the basal portion of the leaf is left on the stem itself. It's a fern character. This is there also in cycads. Some cycads actually have fern characters. One of the fern characters the cycads exhibit is the persistent leaf bases. This is Zamia, a member of family Zamiaceae. It's also a cycad. and in san joseph college campus we have two species of cycas this is called cycas revoluta the other one is called cycas sersenialis which i will show you later the stem has a crown of foliage leaves which are compound leaves which are spirally arranged and if you see a single leaflet which is very thick and leathery and each leaf has got the margins which are revolute which are rolled inside this is a leaflet the leaf margins are inrolled and incurled it's called revolute margin and that is why it's called cycas revoluta and this is cycas revoluta and we have it in st joseph college campus mentioned to you already that there are two species of cycas genus living in st joseph college campus we have cycas revoluta and this is cycas sersenialis in case of cycas revoluta the leaflets are having revolute margin whereas in case of cycas sersenialis this is a compound leaf the compound leaf has got the leaflet is a unipinnately compound leaf the leaflet is flat thin and flat okay it is not inrolled and the margins are showing wavy nature in case of cycas uh, sersenialis the leaflet shows uh, flat leaves and the margins are wavy gymnosperms are a class of seed bearing plants consisting of about 1079 species in 83 genera and 12 families According to Spohn 1965 gymnosperms are classified into three classes cycadopsida coniferopsida neatopsida cycas is the type species under cycadopsida and pinus is the type species under coniferopsida and we study neatum under neatopsida these are the three groups of gymnosperms three main groups of gymnosperms cycas pinus and neat 
gymnosperms are terrestrial vascular xerophytic plants that produce by seeds but they produce naked seeds and they do not have ovaries ovules directly transform into seeds after the fertilization the word gymnosperm comes from the greek word gymnos meaning naked sperma meaning seed gymnosperms originated about 380 million years back in the devonian period and dominated the earth in the carboniferous period most of the gymnosperms have become extinct hence they are called living fossils gymnosperms are a small group of seed plants today they are dominant only in the cold areas of the temperate regions where instead of rain there is no fall at other places they have been replaced by angiosperms in warmer areas only a handful of gymnosperms can be observed they are distributed all over the temperate and tropical region but they are restricted to certain localities all gymnosperms are perennial and woody plants forming either bushes or trees some of these are very large trees for example sequoia is a very tall tree grows up to 112 meters in height the smallest gymnosperm is zamia pygmea which grows up to about 26 cm there are no flowers in gymnosperms but there are two types of sporophylls produced microsporophylls and megasporophylls these are aggregated to form cones or strobili the male cones produce pollen grains and the female cones produce the ovules seeds do not occur inside the fruit since there is no ovary ovules directly transform into seed hence they are called naked a distinction of ovary style stigma is totally absent ovules if present are orthotropous and sessile and each ovule is surrounded by three layered integument female gametophyte contains archegonia pollination is direct as the stigma is absent and the pollen grains directly reach the micropylar end of the ovule pollination is usually accomplished by wind it is anemophilous pollination male gametophytes reproduce only two male gametes and sperms generally one of them is functional male gametes are developing inside the pollen grain and the pollen grains may be spherical a subspherical or wing shaped as in the case of pinus an external water is not required for the transportation of the male gamete instead pollen tube is formed by the male gametophyte for effecting fertilization and hence it is called siphonogamous fertilization seeds contain a food laden tissue or endosperm for the development of the embryo into seedling like pteridophytes gymnosperms do not contain vessels in their xylem phloem is without companion cells and sew tubes sew cells are not arranged end to end in rows vascular tissues are arranged into vascular bundles just like angiosperms vascular bundles of stem are open so that secondary growth occurs so these are the general characters of gymnosperms and what you are seeing is sequoia one of the largest plant on the earth and it is a gymnosperm it's also called redwood tree thank you very much for watching my videos please like share and subscribe